How are we all tonight? Not we fine? Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, for my incredible sins, I'm not quite sure what they were. I'm doing the presentation because our wonderful chair, Esther McAllister, and our wonderful vice chair, um, Marguerite Smith, are not here, but they send their love as of about three hours ago when they went to bed. Um, so we are Glasgow 2024, a world con for our futures. Our proposed dates remain the same, which is the 8th to the 12th of uh, August in 2024, funnily enough. Um, which is a Thursday to a Monday. Um, as you can see behind us, that is the armadillo. So our uh, little mascot here has been called that. So that's the SEC Center, which we'll be using for our major events. Um, and beside it is the OVO, or uh, UFO, uh, which is also called the SEC Hydro. Um, and hiding just behind the armadillo shape is the SEC Campus where we will be uh, using most of the campus itself for the event, as in 1995 and 2005. Although there has been much redevelopment, and including that the um, armadillo has had significant works on the acoustics and other aspects within it, and can sit up to 3,000 comfortably, which will cover very nicely the Hugo's, which is what we intend to hold in. At the moment, we are planning to use halls one, two, and four with an option on hall five. Uh, we have hall five now. Oh, developments have happened. Um, so we have hall five, and we're using the log suites and the various other suites associated with it, and the armadillo. At present, we're not planning to use the SEC Hydro. If we um, have membership levels that require that, Mark Meehan, our head of facilities, has told me he'll kill me. Um, so. <laughs> So at the moment we have 1,020 adult attending members. So we're, well, we have 1,028 adult attending members. So we are we're we're kind of off using the SEC Hydro at the moment. But you know if you haven't signed up yet, please do, and we'll see what happens. I like to push Mark's boundaries. <laughs> so uh, the Crown Plaza, which is attached to the SEC campus. Um, by a uh, bridge is going to be our main party hotel and that is where the fan bar will be and to some questions to anticipate that is indeed where the real ale bar will be as per previous world cons. It's going to be our main uh, party space where uh, you will be able to hold various different events but there are um, seven other hotels now on campus which is an increase um, from the last time. The Radisson Blue has indeed finished and ground is being broken on another hotel at the moment. They also have spaces that can be used for various different breakout places and parties. And we have spoken to the, you can just see it across the bridge. Vince, can you point to that kind of across the Clyde? Which one? The uh, Science Centre. Yep. So we've also spoken to the Science Centre about using some of their spaces for breakout events. And if you, we don't, everybody should just go there because they're fabulous. So, there we go. Um, there is, yeah, our rooms are hoping to be released in January in 2024 with the accessible rooms being released earlier and then to staff. At the moment, there is a full audit of all accessible rooms happening within that in line also with the, um, the Tourist Bureau and the Royal College of Nurses to make sure that we are not only all hotels are meeting standards, but exactly how accessible we can make everything be. Um, and again, nice overview there. There has been a lot of development in the area and since 2005, and I say this as a student who lived in there in 2003, um, Finiston, where the SEC is situated, is now the foodie strip of Glasgow and there are some amazing restaurants that we can strongly recommend. Ox and Finch is a personal favourite of mine. They are all within um, comfortable walking distance and I can also say that the furthest on site, on campus site hotel is 400 <coughs> metres which having checked Google and consulted with Dave um, is two Chicagoan blocks so two and a half New York blocks from door to door. 
from the from the council. I'm not going to your slot. The long, the long, the long, the long, the long blocks. blocks. Very good. I checked. I had to look this up. Um, so uh, it's 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 not a difficult walking distance, and it's very flat in that area as well. It's all accessible, um, and there will be movies to rent on site. Um, this is the Radisson Red, as you can see with the sky top bar kind of looking out, that will be in a resent rentable space. And many of the rooms have art in them by Frank Quigley, um, along with it's just really rather cool and has some great vibes. Let me show you some more to enjoy the vibes and the feeling. Uh, this looked neater before, but let's just run with it. It's all in the questionnaire, however, so do, do refer to that. I am very tired. Our chair is Esther McAllister. <laughs> Our vice chair is Vince Smith, uh, Margaret Smith. Vincent Doherty is head of events. Uh, John Dowd and MJ Amarillion are uh, event, well, AD and D. Can you spot the, the Fanish yeah. connection there? For artists, art <coughs> dealers and displays, uh, facilities Mark Meehan. And we have just recruited uh, Mark Herr and TR for DDHs for that area. Steve is Steve the Money, obviously, um, for finance. And we have Terry Neal, Chris Reagan. We have Paul Taylor and Fiona Sullivan on logistics. Brian Nisbet, uh, Nigel Furlong and Bella Store Cogsgrove. We have Ian, who I blame very much for being here today, um, for a program with many other wonderful people in um, reserve to come in. We have my wonderful, wonderful co-DH, Matt Calvert, who cannot be here and myself for promotions, um, along with our wonderful DHs, Noel and Agenda and Marcy, Marcy and Cleck. Ah, we're back. I didn't break it. This is why I'm not allowed tech. <laughs> we have Sarah Felix uh, for, and James Bacon for publications, and member and staff services is Shana Worthen at the moment, and we're putting others. Uh, yep, with us is Nicholas White and Kat. Yeah, as you go in the administrator and DDH. Um, currently, our convention rates are as listed. Um, we have discounted adult attending for the first Worldcon for a Scottish fan. Um, so that is Scotland and the Scottish Isles, just in case any of you are uncertain. And historically underrepresented voices. We have the Whispers Only membership. We're so grateful that passed because that's not been difficult to explain at all. And uh, <laughs> virtual memberships will go on sale from the 1st of May in 2023 and day tickets from the 1st of March in 2024. But obviously, you will all be members by then. And again, young adult, teen attending, child, and infant. Is it apocryphal for dogs? I'm just asking for a friend. Oh, okay, there's stuff as well. Okay, cool. Um, this is the, f well, this is the fun part. So we, we've been consistently offering virtual uh, program from June 2020 with our Glasgow 2024 Presents. And we have uh, a panel on the 8th this month on Wheel of Time and Fandom. Um, we've also got a Twitch channel, which we've been streaming through. We are partners with the University of Glasgow and the Future Voices of Scottish Science Fiction and Fantasy Network, which has um, a virtual offering on the 7th, which is being chaired by Esther. I do um, recommend you dial into that. <coughs> we have had two BS BSFA award-winning pieces of art by Ian Clark, and we have obviously got the wonderful Sarah Felix our convention TRS, our logos, um, and is Hugo best an artist. We ran our Move 5000 mile, uh, 5000, good God, I'd be dead by now. Uh, we moved 500 miles physical activity event from January last year to Shycon as we moved towards the boat where we were happily seated. Um, we've been running a volunteer demographic survey. Uh, we're working with the Royal College of Nurses for our accessible and access policies. And we have, we think, the first ever bespoke gin, which is rather fabulous. And as of yet to preempt the questions, cannot be internationally shipped, will be on site at the convention and any other um, UK based convention that you can attend in the meantime. Or if you're going to Boscon, where I'm sending two bottles with James, no more than two bottles, no matter what he thinks. Um, 
We also have our landing zone tartan, which had dinner not run long, I would have been wearing, but you can see in the ribbon and in the lanyard. Um, and then uh, absolutely wonderfully mod modeled at uh, Shaiko and Hugo's. Um, and we've just, we've had a bid, bid yarn with Alba, um, Alba Ether, and we've just released, thanks to Lola um, through Third World Yarns, the rather gorgeous and wonderfully punned Skin Do um, really to match our tartan yarns. Um, so there's lots of fabulous extra activity associated with yeah, the bed. Yeah. Uh, so what's next? Lots of things. I mean, that's basically it, lots of things. We, we, the devil makes work for idle hands, and so we just make work for our lot anyway. Um, so there's lots of um, virtual activity coming up. We've been looking ahead to um, planning various events and recruitment, um, getting ahead on um, virtual platforms, and I'm going to hand things over. We're still looking for additional volunteers, so we do hope that you will get involved um, as soon as you can. Oh my goodness, that was January 2020 in that bottom bottom corner there. I had no idea what was about to happen. <laughs> they gave me gin. Um, and yeah, so you can reach us on our info, our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Instagram. Again, another amazing piece there. That's the Girder Dragon by Ian Clark. Um, and big fire questions because that's all I got, guys. Thank you. Okay, starting with the questions from the audience. Um, you had mentioned some rates in your uh, presentation. Do those rates include the WISFIS membership, uh, and is there a separate uh, WISFIS membership, attending membership, and so forth? And do you need a non-refundable WISFIS membership to purchase other forms of memberships, like day memberships? All the rights, all the rights that were on the slide include the WISFIS membership. If you actually go online, you'll see that the uh, full attending adult is 125 with a note that we will add a WASFIS membership when you purchase that, and similarly for other ones. Um, the full adult, the discounted adult, the young adult, and the teenage membership all include WASFIS membership. The child and infant are tickets, basically. They do not include membership. And the apocryphal do not. <laughs> yes, the apocryphal does include membership. <laughs> you can't vote. Who will be running your art show? The uh, art show host will be uh, John Wilson and Serena. Uh, they ran the art shows at Longcon and at Dublin. Thank you. Uh, what is your schedule of progress, uh, progress reports? Oh, I know this one. <laughs> So the PR one is due to come out around about, depending on time zones, um, because Sarah's head of publications, the 22nd of January next year. So 22, oh my God, that's not far away. Um, <laughs> and then we'll follow quarterly. Extrapolate quarters out from there. All right, one of the questions that we've been asking all of the uh, presenters what is the human rights situation in your area and country? We've gone through five prime ministers <laughs> in the last three years, but we've still got one first minister, and she's great. Um, so, there, I mean, it's pretty consistent across the, U, the UK at the moment. There's lots of human wrongs, and I think we're doing a lot of human middles, and I would like it to be a lot better in general. But um, I feel quite safe under Nicola Sturgeon's care. We have very strong transport policies. We've made that clear from the outset. We're working with the Convention Bureau. We're working with local government to make sure that everything is in line. So we do the best we can. We take advice where we need to. No gender discrimination? <laughs> this is Scotland. You absolutely <laughs> cannot discriminate in, in genders. <laughs> yeah, no. 
Uh, you mentioned earlier how many members you have. Uh, how many are you expecting? The, I can ask what we're budgeting are, which is around 4,000 attending adult members and around 500 virtual adult members. But we assume we will get more of this, this is what we are budgeting for at the moment. Thousand additional adult virtual attending or five hundred just shit. Okay, that's four thousand att physically attending five hundred virtual. Okay. <clears throat> um, now we have some specific questions about uh, touring the area. Oh, God, uh, yeah. For for people who are uh, not drivers. How easy is it to get from the convention site to other locations, such as the Scottish Jewish Heritage Center? Okay. So very. I have an address if you want it. Yes. Yeah. No. No. I I want that. Nope. It, it, it's not. Um, it's very easy. I mean, there's plenty of Ubers and and taxis and pretty decent uh, public transport within Glasgow itself to um, to the Garnet Hill. Uh, your heritage center um it's really not far i, can't, I mean I, like this is a glasgow way of doing it i just walk you to give you the directions so that's how i know it's not far um we'd have a chat on the way it'd be fine um so uh and then other touring there was a list of list of things there no there's another one there's another question okay that's fine um so the uh the glasgow underground consists of 16 stops in a circle, so you can't get lost on it. That one's fine. <laughs> Challenge accepted. It's also, it's called the Clockwork Orange as well. There's a drinking game, I don't recommend it. Um, um, and uh, yeah, and it's, you know, you can you can easily sort of there's a big red bus that you can get on and off across Glasgow that will take you kind of through all the various stops. Um, the two th uh, the 2024 made a, a NASVIC bid and made a, a very bold statement of guaranteeing no snow. We cannot do that. Um, However, we can probably guarantee within 20 minutes the weather will change. <laughs> and if it's over 14 degrees Celsius, it's technically called taps aff in Scotland, which means that it's warm enough for most of us to be in, sh you know, vest top, shirt sleeves, or the guys are generally literally taps aff. So this is why we don't discriminate against gingers, and there's a lot of milk bottle white flesh skin on display. <laughs> And again, as someone who is not going to be driving, um, how easy is it to get from Glasgow to other tourist cities such as Edinburgh or London? So what, or if somebody wanted to go to uh, Inverness or Loch Ness area? Very easy again. So the, um, the Glasgow to Edinburgh route is a 50 minute express train, or if you feel really adventurous, there's the bus. It's about an hour. Um, but it's festival season, so it's an hour, and there's entertainment on the bus um, <laughs> as well. Um, there's pretty good uh, train lights, and I, I strongly recommend going on the train up to the Highlands, um, or the, or even the buses up through Glencoe because it's it's stunningly gorgeous. Um, and then I mean Glasgow has an international airport. Edinburgh has an international airport. There's um, Central Station and Queen Street Station, which will both take you whatever, whichever route through to London, or to Liverpool, to Newcastle, up to Inverness and Fort William, and it's pretty straightforward to get ferries to Sky, um, Iona. So um, the world is your oyster if you're not a driver, as well. Again, another question that we've been asking all the presenters. Is, is your space fully accessible and are there areas that might present a challenge? Uh, we believe that the site is largely uh, fully accessible. We're still doing a final audit of the, the, the centre with our access team. It's the same way we do full audit with the hotel rooms. Check that you know, 
Hotels will tell you they have an accessible room, and it's not always what we would consider an accessible room, which is why we're doing the audit. Um, the convention centre itself should be, is fully accessible. The hotel is fully accessible as well, but there are some limitations which would be elevators. It's also worth saying that the convention centre was used as a Nightingale Hospital, which it didn't actually need to be set up for a Nightingale, Nightingale Hospital, and then was used as a major vaccination centre. So the, the staff and the venue itself is used to the requirements of um, queuing and space within a COVID situation, which is definitely a big change since 2005, and everybody knows nobody loves a queue like the Brits. <laughs> <coughs> okay, any more questions from the audience? Write them down, please. Anybody? I see nobody having any questions. Looks like you're free to get some sleep. Yay! Okay. Thank, you. Like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that concludes this evening's formal program. Informal program will have